about this? He walks in from that side. Okay. okay? You walk it, following behind and backing up, and just keep on backing until you get out of the frame, and I'll stay on yours, and you, you turn, and you can see the crowd standing up and clapping. Go down. Go on. Well, look, he walks out uh, from stage right. He's walking out, he's waving the audience and everything, and the audience is clapping. Just get a shot, a kind of a wide shot with him on the left side of the screen and the audience, you know, cheering, and you're backing out of the screen. As soon as you're backed off the stage, I can hit the wide shot outside. So you don't, never see you. You don't want to follow him out tight halfway and then stop him widen out. That's, that's what I was doing. That's, that's, that's basically what I was saying. Okay. Good. When, when we're ready to walk out, I'm going to, you tell me exactly what you want me to do, and I'm going to do it. You just do whatever comes down. <laughs> okay. Don't worry yeah. about me. Don't, I mean, you know, don't, you have don't to pay attention to the camera. Like yeah, just... don't give me license, because I'll be like, okay, walk like a dog. No. <laughs> <laughs> we got a new first <laughs> opener right here. Walk like a dog. <laughs> Quit ALC, let's go on the road. <laughs> there you go. A man is popping a search. He's looking for a how to make a You cannot wake up a man to cut the grass. You cannot wake up a man to paint the house, but you can wake him up to go hunting. Cajuns do hunt. What's your name? This is my son, Stephen. <laughs> Who? This is my son, hey, Stephen. Nice to meet you, man. Mr. John. You go to school? What school? S.J. Montgomery? We get a level up Montgomery? Up Montgomery? Montgomery Institution? Just a level. Oh, it's just a school? Yeah, well, Grady in. Let me guess. Scott, fourth. Yes. Third? You look fourth grade, man. You'll know, you, you've seen my show sometimes. You'll know when I'm talking about children and the toys we had and the slip and slide. Yeah. And you'll know when I'm talking about marriage because it's going to be all about my wife. Right. You'll know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about my family because I'll bring up living in a large family. The marriage is the one you're talking about with the my closet wife. and all that That's stuff. That's it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Would you do me as, as a good favor? My friends give a very warm welcome on behalf of the Union Program Counseling, AOC, and myself, bringing you Mr. Jerry Guillory. Hey, how are you doing tonight? Yeah, me and Tommy have worked together for about three and a half years. And including tonight, he has never been early for anything. We were supposed to be here at 7. I passed by John's house to pick him up. He said, no, Timmy, don't go in my car. We take off. We are and who we are. Just about me being proud from I'm here. Because if people watch, I want them to know about how, how homely this is to me, where, how I feel this is home. College life, USL. Okay. Got a joke about the math teachers, and you'll see me go through the, the routine with the sweater on my head, and the, the Math 105 jokes, and so on and so on. Cool. All right, John, let's do it. I'm ready. I want to do something tonight that really gives me an honor. To be honest with you, I've worked for this gentleman for about three and a half years. And more than uh, a mentor, he's been a real good friend. We've had fun, we went through strange things and fun things and crazy things. Now, without any further ado, one of my best friends in the whole world, from the Collegiate Comedy Circuit, HBO, Showtime, MTV, a national finalist of the National Lampoon Comedy Competition. He went down to number four out of 3,000. A man that I am proud to be associated with, my real good friend, Mr. John Morgan.
Two very special people are, are with us tonight. One of them is Acadiana Open Channel. So would y'all do me a favor and give them a big hand? I'm very happy they're here. Now the second one is the people at home who, who are watching this sitting on your sofa. Looking down at your toenails right now. <laughs> Realizing they need to be clipped. You ever have that one big toenail that busts through all your stockings and everything? <laughs> Just rip your socks all up. That big corn toenail. <laughs> My dad had a pair of slippers used to bust a hole through the front of everyone. <laughs> if you think about it, though, I'm glad y'all here, coming from home, and, and everybody that is, and some good friends of mine are here tonight. Very happy my parents came up from New Orleans to see me. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Got married seven months ago. <laughs> <laughs> Everything was supposed to be half and half. 50 50. Give and take. Scratch and be scratched. <laughs> I got married, man. And it was great. Don't get me wrong. But I, I had to go home. I couldn't carry her through the door. <laughs> Some of y'all out in TV land know what I'm talking about. Because you sitting looking like she wasn't that big when I married her. <laughs> I know where he's coming from. <laughs> and we got wives sitting there going, don't say anything. <laughs> in fact, change the channel. I don't like him. <laughs> you know it, man. I brought her in the house. I said, baby, I said, I'm so happy. Man, this really is cool. I love you. I love you. She said, yeah, me too. <laughs> I said, we got six drawers in the dresser. And I said, three for you and three for me. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not. <laughs> I need five. You take the top one. <laughs> My stuff is in a paper bag in the hall closet. <laughs> I figured the top of the counter in the bathroom was 50 50. Need my little cologne shaving equipment. I mean, I ain't got much shaving equipment. I, I look like a chihuahua with the mange, man. <laughs> I have no hair on my chest. I tried putting Miracle Grow on it and a Boston fern blew up right. <laughs> I said, whoa. I said, look, just need a little counter space for my cologne. She said, no, I need it all. <laughs> all? Yeah. My stuff is in an overnight bag on top of the paper bag in the hall closet. <laughs> Hanging clothes, I thought one closet for her, one closet for me. She said, no, I need them both. I'm hanging above the overnight bag, above the paper bag, in the hall closet. <laughs> All my stuff. My dogs. I love them, man. I figured when I got married, I had a dog, Muggsy. Cool! She brought two more that I bought, don't get me wrong, but the two girls are more important than my boy. Let me give you for instance. Muggsy sleeps outside of the bedroom in the hallway on the hallway floor. Them two other hairy dogs <laughs> sleep with us. <laughs> the other day, I rolled over to try to get a little more room. Look. Uh. <laughs> I said, whoa, 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 whoa. Who paid the rent? <laughs> Ain't no be no more pedigree for you. <laughs> Going to generic food, man. <laughs> You know it too, man. L living life married is different. It's just different. It's just different. You gotta remember to put the seat down when you're finished. <laughs> I just leave it down and aim best I can. <laughs> <laughs> just go for it. You ought to see me when I make it, man. I get so excited. Yay! Yay! <laughs> A few drops wound up hitting it anyway. 
amazing. I did enjoy my time here at USL. Wonderful place, man. You know, if you think about it sometimes, don't know where you go, what you're doing, why you do it. You just know you come to a place and you learn to love it. You learn that you're 18 years old, you come to college, and it's a new field day. Nobody is watching you. <laughs> Nobody to answer to. Nobody washing your clothes. <laughs> Men get used to it, though. We dig in a dirty clothes hamper till we find a clean pair of underwear. <laughs> yourself the whole time. I know there's a pair I only wore in here once. <laughs> I came here, man. I was so excited. I knew this was the place to be. USL, University of Southwestern Louisiana, Raging Cage. The Bulldog. Uh. <laughs> he sure is better looking than that ugly Cajun man was. <laughs> With the big water head. <laughs> I remember coming here and they gave me a red packet with a map on the back. I was one of them creepy crawlers across campus too. And had that upperclassman run up to me and go, hey, 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 you need some help? And you know, you, you young, dumb. Yes, I, I, I can't find the biology building. <laughs> well, my brother, let me help. <laughs> Go past Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> if you with me, say, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Come on. You know it, man. And you see the big sign that says Acadiana Plasma Center. <laughs> Freshmen walk into there and everybody giving blood and they go, oh. <laughs> USL takes biology pretty serious. <laughs> I loved it here, man. Could not get through math very easy. <laughs> see, besides doing my own laundry, I couldn't read the tag, you know? <laughs> Said, don't drive. <laughs> Somebody right now in the audience is saying, thank you for not dogging me out. <laughs> Come in. Come in, Nick, find a seat. <laughs> Is more I'm I wonder why it is 
Why is it truly that we're taught those things? I had a difficult time understanding the concept of learning how to appreciate word problems. I had a difficult time. Please bear with me. <laughs> Number one, if a train is coming down the track at X miles an hour, train is coming up the track at Y mile an hour, where will they meet? They're not going to meet. They're going to crash. <laughs> if I build a swimming pool in my backyard, 50 by 70, and my backyard is 90 by 120, how much room will I have around the pool? <laughs> I'm graduating from a college in Louisiana. I'm not going to be building a pool. <laughs> If I do, it'll be out of state. <laughs> to those politicians who say you're for education, do it. Do it. I dare you. I threaten you. <laughs> if you think about it too, my favorite one is Susie can clean the room and half the time Billy can. How much will it help if Janie helped out? <laughs> She don't want to let her clothes all around, yeah? You know what I'm saying? If she wouldn't leave her stuff around, ain't nobody need to clean it up. If I take a half a pound of high roast coffee, mix it with a pound of low roast coffee, how much blending would it make of medium roast? Do I look like one about this? <laughs> Give me some coca leaves to chew on. I'll pick all them coffee beans. <laughs> I think our young kids need to stay off drugs. Yes, we do. That's why if you have any, bring them up here, right here to me, right now. <laughs> oh boy. You know, the more I think of it, the more I honestly got to realize how, how life really is, man. People pick on us being from Louisiana, but I got news for you, man. There's proud people here. I was born and raised in New Orleans and settled in Lafayette. God have found this home. People here have such rich culture. Let me tell you about these people. In a humorous way, oh yes, because that's how I found them. And that's how we'll leave them. You see, they complain about us in Louisiana having hurricanes. Hell, we had first choice. <laughs> it was either hurricanes or earthquakes. If our house floats down the bayou, we'll pull it back. <laughs> Try that with an earthquake. Maybe we do. Sure, I don't know. That's kind of fall. Maybe if we got that come along on the truck, we could pull that thing back up. No, my luck, I'd be in the party when the earthquake hit. Honey! And the wall that would collapse? would be the moment to paper on it. <laughs> Louisiana, why do we have a hurricane? Did you notice all the looting that was going on in Florida? People stealing from one another? Human beings taking things that didn't belong to you? If I could have made it down now, I'd been. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, that's not the point. The point of the matter is, you didn't hear about too much of that going on in Louisiana. Oh, no! You know them Cajuns standing in front of their house like this. Sure, I know it look like hell, but it's my parlor here. <laughs> Man, don't you take yourself around here, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> you had looters going, no, that's Boudreaux, man, no. <laughs> Cajun life is wonderful, man. We're the only people in the world where we'll build bridges over anything. <laughs> Longer than anything, man. Who thought of building something over Pontchartrain? You know what I'm saying? Lake Pontchartrain. Over that dead lake. <laughs> that nobody's cleaning up. You know what I'm saying? 20, what is it, four miles? What about the Bonnie Carey Spillway? The Chaplai Basin. You know, that thing's built over homes too. Why? They're Cajuns. Sure, if his house is in the way, may you build that bridge over. <laughs> man, because you know he can vote. <laughs> you 
Did you ever get a flat on that thing? Traffic all back up. All the way back to Baton Rouge. You ever notice you're driving along, you know what I mean, and one person gets a flat, everybody slows up, you know? You ever start to think <laughs> that you behind them going, hurry up, hurry up, come on, till you get next to the person with the flat, and then you go. <laughs> if you own an American car, you jack it up like, you know, this macho man. <laughs> I got a Japanese car. People blow the horn and wave at me while I'm jacking up like, look. <laughs> oh no, you don't. <laughs> we ain't scared. Life's so great. Get stopped by Louisiana State Troopers. That's something. Step out the car. Step out the car. Step out the car. Put your hand on the car. Don't hate me. Some place drive a lot of rest right and keep it here. Huh? Let me say you drive a lot of registration and people ain't in. <laughs> you tell him, look, man, I got a driver's license registration, but I ain't got no uh, in here. <laughs> I didn't know what he thought I had under the seat or something, you know? Give me that uh, I ain't got no uh. <laughs> And just when you're about to talk your way out of a ticket, your drunk friend goes, hey, my old everybody, you come on. <laughs> I think the neatest part about Louisiana's and families, man. We, we, we something. I don't care who you are, where you're from, what color you are, family is everything in this, in this state. You know it is, man. Do, do your mom, if you're lucky to have both mom and dad, it's awesome, man. You know that. Brothers and sisters and children. <laughs> I had a rotten brother, man. We were forced to sleep together. We was in a twin bed, and I heard a noise that night. <laughs> I heard it. And I said, what was that? And he said, we playing on football. <laughs> that he's up six nothing. <laughs> just then I heard the loudest noise of my life. I think he did something. Because <laughs> when I asked him what that was, he said, it's time to switch sides. <laughs> You ever take a little boy to the bathroom? <laughs> Is that the coolest? <laughs> they so happy, man, that they can do it. I didn't do it, my dad. <laughs> they cute, man. Little boys are cute. Little girls always say, I didn't do it myself. <laughs> if they fall in, flush and watch them spin around. <laughs> Oh, man, I think the greatest thing about kids is I have blessed with 26 nieces and nephews, none of my own. I'm scared. I'm scared. Look at me. Can you see another one like me? Get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> I never know what my mother and father went through, man. Nine of us. I'm, I'm having trouble feeding three dogs, man. <laughs> If I came home from work the other day, huh? Check this out, huh? Huh? My wife looks at me and I look at my dog. My man, my dog, my buddy, my dog. Not the two fuzzy wuzzies. <laughs> my dog, you know? And he looking like this, look. I see what's the matter with Muggsy. She said, oh, I don't know. He's been like that for about six months. I said, huh? Her two happy, fluffy puppies. <laughs> My boy, I'm straight, man. Like he come in from a bad night or something. <laughs> what happened? It's cool, man. 
rocks, we rock, man, we rock, we rock. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Took him to the vet. Vet said we're gonna have to have surgery. <laughs> Wait a oh, on the dog? <laughs> said he had to call in the anesthesiologist to put him to sleep. <gasps> How much that? 300. 300! <laughs> Operate! <laughs> Operate! You know, when you grow up and the kids with hand-me-down stuff, I did, we grew up, we had older brother's clothes and every now and then we bust up on something new. I remember my mom and dad took us to, to uh, Walmart, uh, TGY, something like that, to buy us new suits for my sister's wedding. <laughs> this was way back in the 70s, you know, way in the early 70s. It's about four years old, five years old. I was a little older now, I was about maybe about 11. <laughs> And I had that sin sucker suit, boy. I mean, had more polyester in it. You brush up on me, you bust in the flames, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was kicking in that suit. Dark blue with light blue. Thread trim, man. <laughs> with a collar stuck out like a flying nun's cap. <laughs> <laughs> I was great, man. Sometimes if you think about it though, when you grow up in a big family like that, you learn to share and everything. I had underwear, skid marks already in them. I mean, this <laughs> hand me down. <laughs> you just never know sometimes. <laughs> but that's this, my family, my kids, man. I remember the first time I got to change my nephew's diaper. You know, I, I look, you know, I go, whoa! <laughs> this uh, multicolored and everything, look like a rainbow. I say, whoa! So I didn't have no flour, you know, uh, you know, powder. <laughs> well, I gotta be honest, I threw some cornstarch on him. <laughs> His little honey rolls that high, man. <laughs> I didn't waste it, though. I put it on 450 and baked for half hour. <laughs> Sometimes, if you think about it, too, you know, if you ever get the opportunity, it's babysit. My little nephew comes into the living room, name Joshua carrying a big red plastic bat. Parents out there, look at your children right now and you're gonna know what I'm talking about. Those of you in the audience who do have kids or those of you who have little brothers and sisters, place yourself, draw in with me, visualize. <laughs> Go into the room and Joshua has the big red plastic bat. Jeremiah is crying. Ah! Under John, I did, I did, um, I did. I did not ping, ping Jeremiah in the head. <laughs> did not. I said, you didn't ping him in the head with that big red bag. Uh, uh, uh. But somebody did. Uh, huh. <laughs> but you didn't do it. Uh, uh. I said, that means somebody else is in the house. <laughs> he said, uh-uh, I did it. Uh-uh, I did that. I got tired of playing with him, man. Them two little boys are way out. Way you out, man. Just in their little underwear and everything. Running around. Oh, you used to wear them, huh? <laughs> so lo and behold, I said, I can't play with y'all no more, you know? I said, hey, y'all wanna play a game? Coyote and Roadrunner! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine having an uncle like that? Coyote and Roadrunner! <laughs> they were like, uh-huh. Said, great, I am the coyote. I got that Acme paint. Now I can paint in the front of the refrigerator a hole, see? Now you are the Roadrunner. You can go through, <laughs> but I can't. Ready, go. Both of them took off running. <laughs> took a two-hour nap, and I relaxed, man. <laughs> Why is it great to be a kid and be in Louisiana? It's great to be a kid and be in Louisiana because you know your imagination is going to grow. We didn't have swimming pools, all of us. No, we didn't. I had a cement pond in the backyard, Dad built for us. When we were kids, we thought that was the, you know, we had a built-in pool. 
Then when we outgrew that, we'd just wait for it to rain and the ditches would fill up. <laughs> and we'd jump off the mailbox, man, just... <laughs> I used to think to myself, yeah, Greg Louganis, he's a great diver, huh? Yeah, he's a wonderful diver. Wonderful. Let me see him do a double gainer off the back of my mailbox. <laughs> then I'd be happy, yeah, you, you all good. <laughs> and then think about it too, man. My favorite toy, slip and slide. Whoa, that's a toy. They don't need, you know what I'm saying? Remember when you didn't have slip and slide? You had that big, long piece of his queen in the backyard? <laughs> And you come running from the backyard, you had bricks on the side to hold it down. <laughs> While you were sliding, you were dodging bricks. <laughs> I remember I got my first yellow whammo slip and slide. Must have been about 100 yards long. All right, about 35, it felt like it, you know. I came running from the backyard, had my Fruit of Looms on. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> Do it. And ain't nobody told me to put water on it. I hit that baby like <laughs> Got a third degree burn on my face, man. Then somebody said if you put soap and water on it, you slide faster. Came but I put a whole bottle of whisk on it. <laughs> Came running from the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh no. Oh no. No. The grass just ripped that scab right off my face. Rip it off. Something that's, that's meaningful to me, and I'm sure to a lot of people out there, was the crisis that happened overseas. For whatever the reason we went over there, whatever you disagree or, or agree, we went over there and did a job. Might not have done it the way everybody wanted to do it, but we sent a lot of men from Louisiana. A lot of men. <coughs> we sent 600 from USL. That's what we should have did a long time ago. <laughs> Send a busload of coon asses over there. <laughs> Tell them it's Iraqi season and ain't no limit. <laughs> Either that or they from Louisiana. Tell them there is a limit. You know they're gonna go over. <laughs> no two fighter pilots ever came out of better in that crisis. Flying at F-15 chart, that three taller mile an hour. Me boo you on to be do. Shot they fly that F-15 at three taller mile an hour. He said, Shot, you ever flew one of these things before? He said, Me no. He said, You think you can? He said, She, yep. He said, How fast we go? He said, Three taller mile an hour. Just about that time, the radio, literal tip it okay, you want to come in? Shall you know how to talk to him? <laughs> tip it all, say, yeah, hey, man, you pick that little thing up and press it. He said, man, go ahead. Hey. <laughs> hello. I just want to say hello to all my friends in Mamu. <laughs> hello. Yeah, Mamu. He said, man, go ahead. This is a terror. Shit it. <laughs> Not fair, shall I go? Shall we go on three dollars mile an hour? Hey! <laughs> and don't even feel it. <laughs> He said, what's the weather like up there? Man, he want to know the weather. <laughs> Man, he can't look out the window himself. <laughs> Man, hold on. 
Man, I can't talk right now. My lips are peeled around my head. <laughs> Just about that time, Thibodeau took over the controls. He said, Darius, he said, look here, sir. He said, you done made him roll that window down. Man, his lips all around his head. <laughs> Not just the head, the helmet too. <laughs> he look like he from Zimbabwe. He got them things peeled around his head. <laughs> Roll them lip around. <laughs> Both of you fly that McCraft back down here. Bring it on. Boudreau tried to talk to him. He said, Bob, you, you. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, you know how to drive him on the beat, you think? He said, do I know how to drive? He said, man, hell yeah, I know how to drive this thing. He said, you ever been on an aircraft carrier before? He said, no, but watch me. <laughs> 3,000 miles an hour, they flying this thing in. Boudreau said, Shy, you gonna slow up? He said, hell no. <laughs> he said, Shy, we're 100 feet away, you're 3,000 miles an hour, you slow up? He said, hell no. <laughs> He said, if I'm going to fly in, I'm flying there. He stopped that craft in four foot of area. <laughs> 3,000 miles an hour, all that tonnage, man. Move like, <laughs> your head like this. He said, thank God my lips are unpeeled. <laughs> he said, good God, that's a short runway, huh? Thibodeau said, hell yeah, but look how wide it is. <laughs> If you think about it, sometimes, sometimes, knowing who you are and knowing where you're from is, is good. So I say all the people that are from Louisiana, we get picked on, know where you're from. And those of you who don't like Louisiana, pack your stuff and move. Move. You could go somewhere like Colorado, California. You would never be here. I wouldn't go to Colorado. No, I tried skiing one time. Oh no. Something about Louisiana people on that ski mountain, they just don't mix. It's just, it's like we're ready for the water. <laughs> it's hard enough for us to water ski. You ever water ski and try to teach somebody when you fall, let go of the rope? <laughs> I'm skiing. Yeah, he might be laughing at me, but I'm gonna pull this out. <laughs> By the time you come up, you got two speckled trout and a flounder, man. <laughs> I grew up in New Orleans, and we used to go skiing in this thing called the Intercoastal Canal. two females with me and some friends. <laughs> I'd add that in there, my wife was here. <laughs> some friends were with me. <laughs> and they asked me what size skis I needed. And I told them, you know, them some big ones. <laughs> I didn't know the bigger the ski, the faster you ski. I didn't know, man. I'm from here, I don't go skiing. 
I got them big joppers on, man. It's huge. Walk around in front of them, you're in California, man. I get out there and all of them look, Yoos! Woos! Woo! Got up to the ski lift, the chair hits me right dead in the butt. <laughs> my legs are crossed and my skis are caught. And the little girl from Arkansas, working her little winter job, says, excuse me, excuse me, we need a little chair awareness. I said, hey, $3,000 to come down here. Got a room look like Julio Iglesias decorated it, right? Your breath is killing me. You want me on that? Stop it and I will get up. I get up on the chairlift. I'm on my way up the thing. About a 75-year-old lady on the side of me. Hey, it's ma'am. Where you from? Louisiana. You got drugs? Huh? <laughs> 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 no, but I wish I did, man. <laughs> We get to the top, and you just kind of like ski off the little hill, just, you know what I'm saying? And me, she, I, I'm going down. The dude stops the machine. Excuse me, sir, you? <laughs> yes, sir, you with the camouflage jacket on. You gotta get off. <laughs> yeah, and you gotta back it up too. <laughs> you notice when you go skiing, everybody matches perfect. Everybody matches. Coon has a spray scotch coat on their blue jeans, put a camouflage jacket off, and they skiing, man. <laughs> and you can tell they're coming down the hill because they're screaming, hey! 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 Woo! Yeah! Woo! Everybody else is just. They told me plow. When you first learn how to ski, plow. Plow. I said, give me a John Deere, I'll do the whole dang mountain. <laughs> so I'm plowing. Here come this dude from Australia behind me. That was a little kitty knocked down. <laughs> I see him coming too. Hey! Hey! <laughs> Woo <-hee>! <laughs> Yo, Bunny Hopper! <laughs> you see me, huh? You hit me, that's it, bro! Huh? Bring it on! Bring it on! Bring your hopping honey on! <laughs> Bring it up! I stand to me. <laughs> While you're looking backwards, you trip and fall. He comes by me and goes. Good on, Chip. <laughs> Take the 
show it good. Go ahead. Take it. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> tree <laughs> face to face good at chop <laughs> that's when you get up in your yeah <laughs> but I was on top of you sure I know you feel bad <laughs> sometimes you never know if you think about it too when you go skiing or you go on a trip like to Florida or something Men and women are always different about how they approach it. If you think about when women go to Florida, like 30 of them go at one time. Stay in one room. They got a blow dry for each one of them. You ever see 30 women try to fight over one mirror? And all of them got blow dries? Everybody's hair wounds up like this. And I have found the perfect hat for the sorority girl that cannot make up her mind. <laughs> Got a bow for every occasion. Who you pledging? I don't know. <laughs> Men go to Florida, four of them at one time. All they bring is shorts, pair of blue jeans. And the rest of the college is peck would be. <laughs> peck. You ever notice you get out to the beach, guys hit the beach. Whoa! Yeah! Woo! Hit the waves! Woo! <laughs> Come over here, dude! Come over here! Cool! It's kinda warm right here, man! <laughs> Girls say they don't, they don't tinkle in the water. They do. Y'all just go up to where it's this high and go. Yo, come over here. Hey, guess not, all the fish are floating belly up. <laughs> you ever notice women never want to get sand kicked on them? Guys, we in the sand. Frisbee, football, something, just we in it. Women don't want to get the sand. No, just no sprinkle no sand on me. <laughs> They go out to the beach for the beach and sun. Don't hit me with no sand. <laughs> Louisiana girls say, we just got that earl on. I just put my earl on. <laughs> How many men get ready in about five minutes? Five minutes, you're out. <laughs> Guys, if you're out there and you five minutes, just say five minutes. Five minutes, you know it. How many women take at least 15 or more? Y'all all better say yeah, because if not, I'm going to point you out and say, I know why you just took five minutes. It's... <laughs> Men, we don't understand what women go through. They do things that we never even heard of. <laughs> Putting on base makeup. Better known as undercoat enamel. <laughs> Then they put this stuff on called blush. 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 <laughs> Y'all waist makeup too, man. You ever see women grab that makeup thing and they... Come lipstick.
when men put on cologne, <laughs> like it's going to jump off or something. <laughs> When women put on cologne, y'all got them foo-foo bottles. <laughs> y'all gotta get some on your face, but you can't just spray it right on because you mess up your makeup job. So you go <laughs> <laughs> You know as well as I do, since I've been married, and you guys know this too, you know, women are peculiar about what you wear, you know? Now you, you take for instance, you get ready to go out and your lady or wife or girlfriend looks at you and says, you're not wearing that, are you? <laughs> no, I was just airing it out. I hadn't taken it out in a while. I was airing it out. I was just airing it. So I was just airing it. That's why I think all men's clothes ought to be garaminos. <laughs> Walk right into a store and tell them, I need two giraffes. <laughs> Every now and then you could get a little while. Give me two giraffes and an orangutan. <laughs> Gonna be one of them nights. <laughs> How many people enjoy eating at Taco Bell? Say yes. Why is it we do that to our bodies? <laughs> Refried beans. You wanna have fun? Two o'clock in the morning. Drive to Taco Bell. Hola! Hola, como esta? Hey! That little girl's gonna go, excuse me. <laughs> Welcome to Taco Bell. And those burrito. Oh, my mama chica bonita. <laughs> you can pull around that side window, she's gonna look right at you, going, yeah, you think that's funny, huh? It's just funny, huh? You know, everybody's had that job before. I get scared. I worked at, I worked at the Golden Arches before. Whoo, it's one thing coming home smelling like your job, but to come home smelling like a burger? <laughs> Whoo. And it ain't like women are gonna walk in there and look and go, whoo, I want that burger fry. <laughs> Just ain't gonna do it. You know what I'm saying? It ain't gonna happen, man. Women are peculiar, man. Men, we concentrate on one section of women. We do, and it's bad. Guys, wake up, get a life. We do. How you do, ma'am? <laughs> and women, don't y'all just want to go, excuse me, I'm right here. <laughs> Dude. But I have convinced myself, truly, that women concentrate on the buttocks area. You can catch them. <laughs> Guys, check it out. Women walk by you, and they give you that look like nothing's bad. They just give you that look. And you know, guys, we're trying to be friendly. Like, hey, how you doing? Dang. Then about 17 paces away, 15, 16, 17, just turn around and watch them. <laughs> Use it, man. Oh, I'm there. I take it to the limit. Seventeen. Seventeen. Gotcha! Yeah. <laughs> I was walking across the quadrangle. For those of you out there, that is a center area of the University of Southwestern Louisiana's campus, and it's a wonderful place because all the students go out there in the springtime and, and, and everything. Sometimes some, summertime, wintertime a little bit, um, and go out there and just everybody talks and mingles and people walking to and from campus. And and those of you who have never seen Louisiana women on USL's campus <laughs> in the spring, <laughs> oh man, in the fall, <laughs> take a course. I walked across campus and this young lady, oh my God, she's adorable, man. And I walked past her and, and I looked at her and she gave me that, you know, 
So I, I said, I got you. I got you. I got you. 15, 16, 17. Gotcha! She was not looking, Bill. Not looking. People look dead at me. Not looking. It's all right. It's all right. I got to let y'all know something. I had a great time being here. Once again, give a big hand to AOC and the Union Program Council. Also, too, to all my good friends that came out here tonight, all of y'all, give yourselves a big hand. I'm glad you came. And to all you people that are back in home, relaxing and enjoying yourself, take care of one another. Hope to see y'all soon. Take it easy, and good night, everybody. Had a good time being out here with y'all. Thank you very much. Good night.